the second season is intense. Why do you think it's so intense? It's because it's hot out, we're practicing, we're working hard. Practice is the same amount of time, plus we all have one goal in mind, one mission, and nobody wants to fail each other. Everyone's gonna show up to play because, you know, no one wants to say goodbye to their seniors, not just our team. Um, that's every team in, in Division I that's, that gets a chance to play in May. Um, so there's obviously that sense of urgency, and uh, guys are gonna try and give it their all for the seniors. It's about the tough ground balls, drawing tough slides, making sure you're moving the ball to your teammates. It's doing the, the things that aren't easy to do. And I think that's what would separate our our team from other people would be if we're able to make those tough plays, then we'll put ourselves in, in a good place to be successful. The second season is everything. I was watching Coach Matt at Karate play when I was a little kid. And uh, having that in front of us and the chance to do that and play, play there, uh, it's something that's a culmination of uh, a lifelong dream of playing at the highest level. Their names define the sport of lacrosse at the highest level. Four programs annually listed among the elite, linked not only by their past success, but by the expectations placed upon them. So don't, for a second, doubt yourself. Just keep playing. You have a long way to go, but it's paying attention to the details. How great do you want to be? Game time. It's in the back. You better believe it. We all play for one reason. Show out dominating this season. It's time. Take that dub with us so we leaving. You not with us in the streets and brave. I turn it up for the season. Game time. It's the season. 2018. As the calendar turns to May, the hottest team in the country is the Ohio State Buckeyes. Facing steep odds to make the postseason, the Scarlet and Gray have rallied for three consecutive victories to close conference play. First against arch rival Michigan. The Buckeyes take down the Wolverines and they've got Big Ten win number one. Then at top ranked Maryland. Ohio State takes down number one Maryland 12 to 10. And finally, on senior day, in the shoe over Rutgers. Ohio State wins it at home, and the Buckeyes are headed to Ann Arbor for the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, the Big Ten tournament is huge. Uh, it's, it's absolutely huge for us. It's, it's everything we work for all year round. You know, we have the summer calls, making sure guys are lifting. Uh, you know, we're in here at 6 a.m. in the fall. I mean, it, it's for that, you know. We haven't been able to capture one as a program so far, so I think we kind of have a chip on our shoulder in that respect. Yeah, I mean, it, it means everything. I mean, obviously, the Big Ten is an uh, automatic bid if you, if you went out. So um, getting there is extremely important. If you're getting to the Big Ten tournament and, and you're playing well, you're in the right place because you're competing against some of the best teams in the country. Yet their work is not done. A berth in the Big Ten tournament does not ensure them a spot in the NCAA tournament. They would need a victory against one of the most storied programs in the nation, Johns Hopkins. Fourth meeting in two years between Johns Hopkins and Ohio State. Expect a knockdown, drag them out fight for a spot in the Big Ten Championship. To the face-off X we go. This should be a battle all night long. We're off and running from Ann Arbor, Michigan. In the early going, the defense has set the tone. Looking for a spark, the Buckeyes turn to a pair of its leaders, Trey LeClaire and Jack Jasinski. LeClaire settles and fires. He scores. Trey LeClaire. Number 14 is bringing some heavy heat. The inside, Jasinski sprints it and scores. Jack Jasinski. And then there's some extracurriculars after the tally. And then Ohio State takes exception. They shove Bruno. Bruno gets it back. Yet Hopkins was not about to concede anything. Snapshot score. Inside for Kyle Moore. Tarafenko runs right by him, fires and scores! Joel Tinney. He just tattoos the upper portion of the net. Great individual effort, and that is a much needed goal for Johns Hopkins. 36 seconds remaining in the half. Set play to the interior, Karam's in! Huge, huge goal for Hopkins. Unlucky for Ohio State. The half would end with Ohio State clinging to a one-goal advantage. As the game progressed, so too did the intensity. Danny Jones 
Hog ties the midfielder for the Buckeyes. Buckley ran up his back and pushed him. Cole Williams just took a chunk out of the leg of Borges. The team's headed into the final period, knotted at four. Inside score! Finally, Kyle Marr opens up. Again, Jackson Reed gave the lead to the Buckeyes. Things get going downhill. The interior score! On the snap, turning the corner, the Buckeyes grab the lead. But it was a physical play near the Ohio State sidelines that caused things to boil over. Races away. Rock Turnbull covered up on that sideline. Crunch out of bounds, and there's a flag that comes down. Turnbaugh still face and we down. Got, and we got something the going at the, at the penalty box, and big time. This is ugly. This ignites into a brawl as the teams need to be separated. They are both ejection fouls to each Jones and Feliziano. Wow. Holy smokes, what a, what a, what a turn of events. Can Cannon scampers in, finding Maher right up the gut. Fires, he scores! Deadlocked at five, the final minutes of the game would decide the Buckeyes' fate. And the Terrapins await the winner of this game, which is 5-5 with the 23 seconds remaining in the fourth. Johns Hopkins will have the ball and a chance for the winning tally. Tinney marches in, feeds one blindly to the crease. It's blocked, it gets away. Follow-up to Cannon, he scores! The Hopkins bench erupts. Pinball across in Ann Arbor. 11.3 to go. The result was a crushing blow to a team that had come so far. Long range, stopped by Turnbaugh. He heaves it into the night in Ann Arbor. And it is the Blue Jays working through to a Big Ten tournament final against arch rival Maryland. Johns Hopkins prevails. But tip your cap to this Ohio State team, especially this defense. That is a stud unit that Nick Myers has on his back line. Yeah, it's 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 pretty frustrating, you know. Just, you know, being on the, the losing side of games, you know, that you should have should have won, you know, you know you should have won that game. But you know, the win is definitely the, the ending that we want, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Being a competitor. Losing, losing is always the worst. You know, it's it's always terrible. And as much as I want to say it's, you know, it's oh, you just focus on getting better every day. It does get to you sometimes, but um, it's definitely frustrating just just being as competitive as I am. Listen, man, a game like that, those things go either way. It's hard, right? The, the blueprint, uh, the way we live, you know, the way we fight, the way we battle, three, four plays. That, that, that that's a different game, you know. And unfortunately, that's that's the that's the way that one went. You know, again, we don't we don't know what's in store for us, but we know what we got in this huddle. It's something really special. We're very thankful for it. All right? Boom on three. One, two, three, boom. boom. <clears throat> Take the time. You need to see your family's good, and we'll meet in the locker room. All right, go ahead in there. <clears throat> and while moments like this make one contemplate what might have been, instead, the final images of a team outside a stadium leaves a fitting impression of what Buckeye Lacrosse represents. After eight months, hundreds of games, and countless battles, just 17 teams remain. Duke's first round opponent in the NCAA tournament was also the most excited to receive an invitation. All right, number four, Duke, taking on Villanova. So that's one of the bubble teams that we certainly thought coming into this might, might, might even be on the outside in. Duke and for the 13 and three Duke Blue Devils, the arrival of the second season is what really matters. While a group of seniors that includes to Wharton Award finalist Justin Gutterding and goalie Danny Fowler have accomplished much, there's still one missing piece to their resume, a trip to the Final Four. Yeah, well, it would mean everything. I mean, that would be the culmination of a body of work we've been trying to put together. Um, and it's all right in front of us, and we're really excited for it. That's, that's the goal. That's what we came here to do. That's been the culmination of, for me, it would be five years here. And we're just excited to, to get out and get it going and try to make our run here. This group has never won anything. We don't have ACC championship. We don't have 
we have one um, NCAA victory in the tournament. So that's the motivation, really. The guys are excited to play, and um, you know, if we get a chance to play in May, uh, that's all you can ask for. To be ACC Player of the Year, it's, it's it is nice and it's humbling, but um, you know, it's obviously not what I really want, which is that national championship. The Blue Devils' number four seed as a result of a resilient defense and a high-scoring offense, much of which comes from the father-son duo of John and Matt Donowski. While the senior Donowski sets the tone for the program, it's Matt's experience that makes his teaching so relevant. You know, Matt, he coaches with the same passion as when he played. So you have to constantly take a look at how do I teach and how do I coach and how do I kind of figure out how to get guys to do the things that seemed easy for me. It's been interesting for me to, to learn how to bite my tongue and, and watch them grow. As the Blue Devils' all-time leading scorer, Matt Donowski's dynamic style led Duke to three Final Fours and two ACC tournament championships. I think the players, you know, they, they respect him for what he's done on the, you know, uh, what he did here at Duke. Where Matt came from is a little different from where these young men come from. And so um, I, I think, you know, it's, it's been a, a transition for both groups. And if there is anyone that comes close to matching his achievements, it's number 14, Justin Gutterding. Gutterding, the lefty finish! This season, Gutterding became only the second player in Division I history to score 200 career goals. Justin Gutterding has it dialed in. It's something he looked to continue against Villanova. We trust what we've been doing all year. This is bonus time now. This is Constantin Stadium. This is home game. This is graduation weekend. All right? On behalf of the staff, man, we love you guys. Right? You've been, you looked us in the eye, and you stepped up every time out. We love you. Let's go. Duke's offense wasted little time getting started. And a transition. Smith dumps it in front and wide open for the easy goal as Joe Robertson. 22 seconds in. Duke is on the board. Blue Devils working around here. An opportunity for a shot. Count it. Score it for Justin Gutterding. But Villanova was determined to prove they deserved their at-large bid. Sean Clue puts them on the board. Boy, Villanova needed that. In front of the cage, turning, spinning, and shooting for the goal is Kiernan Burns. Up top, Saibo off the turf and through. Villanova has tied it at three. The final 10 minutes of the half belong to the Blue Devils, however. Montgomery shoots and he scores. Nakai Montgomery. This is Montgomery. Bounce shot, score. Dumps it in front. Gutterding, wow. Right there. Count it. Gutterding. Again, Robinson. He got him this time and he scores. What a shot. Montgomery looking for his third today. He's got it. Robertson feeds it down low. Count the goal. And it is Brad Smith that puts it through. This is what the guys play for. Their seven unanswered goals gave Duke a comfortable 11-4 halftime advantage, but their focus remained intense. It's a lot to get there. It's going to take a lot to finish this. Let's go. Yeah. Don't wear him down again. Get the offense ball. Get the offense ball. Go as hard as you can. Please cross. Right? Every time that ball is on the ground, you run through that ground ball. On three feet. One, two, three. Go. Come to work. Come to work. In the third quarter, Villanova methodically cut into the lead. Now Villanova trying to make a comeback here. The flag goes flying in. Testa as Clue goes in and scores. And gets hit at the end. John Clue, big goal for Villanova. Possession here for the Wildcats. It is McNamara shouts to that in. Through. It's in. Devin McNamara. Three goals for Villanova to start this third quarter as they mount the comeback. But Duke seniors were not about to let their final home game end in defeat. Walsh comes in and he scores. Finds a cutter. Look at it. It's Gill again. Still 9.27 to go in this fourth quarter. Smith again. Is it a scoop and a score? Yes, it is. Count it. And this is it. The season's on the line. You got to give it everything you got. Hustle, smart play, working together. Put your best game on the field. Brad Smith finds Robertson. He connects. And 
the onslaught is on here by Duke. When the dust settled, four goals in 34 seconds had given the Blue Devils a commanding lead, punching their ticket to the quarterfinals. And Villanova unable to make the comeback. And it is Duke that advances to the quarterfinals for the second straight season. 17 to 11, winners of Villanova here in the first round. You, you don't score seven goals in a row or, or you don't get eight in a quarter unless you do some of those other things. And, um, and I thought that, you know, we played the game that was, that was in front of us. You know, if you're going to make a run in the tournament, you know, you cannot be a one-man gang. You know, you need, uh, you need a lot of guys who can make plays. While it was the Blue Devils' youth on display, with freshman Joe Robertson and Nakai Montgomery combining for seven goals, the day belonged to the seniors. and downs and you guys did a great job and that's playoff lacrosse you know handling whatever comes your way it's just going to come your way it's going to be fine and and it's really 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 gratifying all right to watch the group mature in front of our eyes and we're going to get better and our best lacrosse is still ahead of us all right we're still going to be better down the road now we got we had a whole week to prepare we'll play next sunday at either 12 noon or 2 30 in Naples, maryland for the Syracuse Orange, the 2018 season has been both hot and cold. Solomon Barbary, tie game! Big wins over top opponents, coupled with a few uncharacteristic losses, have them entering the second season as an eight seed hosting a first-round tournament game in the Dome against an opponent they know well. One of the great rivalries in all of college lacrosse, set to renew once again in upstate New York. Cornell champions of the Ivy League tournament taking on Syracuse, the ACC regular season champs. And these two teams have met 106 times, but just three times previously in the NCAA tournament before tonight. Everything we talk about, the X's and O's, doesn't really matter, fellas. I think it comes down to head, heart, hustle. If you head, heart, hustle, all the stuff we preached all week, all the off, all the defense, it's all going to fall into place for you. Ground balls, intensity, being together. Obviously, everyone's goal is the same. Everybody has the same, the same dreams of playing on Memorial Day. And I know it's cliche, everybody says it, but taking it one game at a time, one play at a time, helps a lot. So the sky's the limit for our team, you know, we're so young. Um, you know, we're so talented up and down the field. I think uh, you know anybody can play at any given time, and that's really shown in our depth of scoring and uh, offensively, defensively, throughout the whole field. I think it's it's really come together nicely, and we got to keep building off it for sure. We're just excited to get back on the you know, week after week. We just, we just want to play, and you know we're going to keep rolling. You know, see where our potential could possibly lead us. Fear is going to drive us, boys. Fear drives everybody. You shouldn't be afraid of it. You should let it drive you. Let it drive you tonight. You let it drive you to make sure you have another day. To make sure you have another day with your family. You take that fear, you conquer it, you do it one play at a time, and you don't give up on a single second. Let's go, baby. Hey, 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 three. One, two, three. Hey, Final game of the first round, and we're underway. Big ground ball picked up by Syracuse. With the shot is good. Dornovic says, take this. The first quarter resembled more of a track meet than a lacrosse game. In front, good luck and a score. Shot, score. He's got range, can stroke it from 15 and stink. Some high cheese. Here's Dordovic right here. Looks like he's got some room. He shoots and scores. Syracuse's hot start gave them a 3-1 lead. But Cornell's potent offense was equally impressive. Cooper to let's go now in that second midfield unit. He's going to get free and shoots and scores! Three consecutive second quarter goals gave Syracuse the momentum. Give it away! Cornell gave it away on the clear, and Rafus was right at the right spot. 
Trippone winds it up and scores. Cornell is out of sync. And it's happening with their seniors, giving the Syracuse opportunities that should not exist. The Orange maintained a 7-5 lead at half. But in the second half, things began to tighten up. Cornell's going to keep it. 37 seconds left to go. In front, Peterson burns it. This game could very well go to overtime. Doiak now thought about shooting, brought it back out. And that's a goal. It's almost as if the scripts have been flipped. Picked up by Syracuse. Crowd's really getting into it right now. It's been close throughout. Brendan Curry gets free and scores! Speed kills. And with seconds remaining in the period, Cornell would look to tie the game at eight. Can Cornell respond here on the road, down a goal? Ten seconds left in the third quarter. Lichardi. An opportunity down low. Quick move by Peterson, he scores! This set up the rivals for a fourth quarter to remember. Nice interception that time. The ball is free to Don. It comes out to try and get it. And a shot. And a save. And another shot to score. Too many opportunities for the big red. And Peterson finally pounced on the loose ball and made him pay. Song behind the cage finds this streaky Tripoli. Really stopped right in his tracks. Here's Bobber. He scores. Ice in his veins. Big shot, Bomberry. Watch where they put Teat on the extra man because he's getting shot. Shot and a score. Colton Rupp gives the big red the lead. Trailing by one with just moments remaining, Syracuse's entire season was on the line. Syracuse is looking for the equalizer first before they can get the game winner. Right now, trailing by a goal, 33.3 remaining. Everybody on their feet. This is Curry to Tripoli. Now, Bobbery, wide of the cage. Rafis has it. Dodges. Gets to the middle of the field. Takes a shot. Not on cage. Syracuse again wins the race to the end line. Seven seconds remaining. Solomon. The officials are calling it. That's it. And Cornell will advance. It is perhaps the cruelest of realities that a moment of one's greatest joy can be so quickly linked to one's greatest agony. You saw Brendan Bombery, the senior captain, in his last game here. But credit Cornell. For the Syracuse Orange and their seniors, the loss means it's the end of their road. And yet the players on these teams weep not because they lost, but because the game has been etched onto their soul. Coming here and having an impact has something was something I always wanted to do and making memorable moments throughout my career that I can look back on and be like, yeah, I was part of that team. You know, yeah, that happened when we were there. We say it's, it's more than a game, it really is. We call it a medicine game, and we say that because, you know, it, it's literally medicine, you know, if I'm playing it and I feel good playing it, nothing else in the world matters. So that, for me, that'd be good medicine. And then we also consider that good medicine for, you know, the people watching who enjoy watching lacrosse and they have that, that those feelings when they watch lacrosse and how they love it and they're, they're into the game. And we also say that we're playing for the creator. This is the last kind of hurrah, um, so to say. So it's, you know, it, it's surreal. I wake up every day and it's like, you know, this is, you know, this is it. The season concludes on Memorial Day. Just one of our four teams remains. <laughs>